Yes, students. Uh, can you tell me now about this point that we have uh, discussed? What uh, are uh, you know, like uh, the benefits that we get being uh, surrounded by the gifts of nature? Can you tell me? Yes, raise your hand. I'll uh, unmute you and you can give me the answer. Yes, Fire, would you like to speak? Abhishek, Pia, Nandini, Tushar? Yes? Anybody answer? Manreet? No one. It's very strange. You were there, right? Of course, uh, making a teacher feel uh, what? Embarrassed? That I asked you a question and you don't want to give me the answer. Come on, let me get the answers from you quickly. What, what are the gifts of nature talked about in this poem? Can you look at the poem and tell me? What are the gifts of nature that are discussed? Yes, boys? What is this poem it's about? It's about that nature gives us happiness, right? And even with the passage of time, the beauty of nature does not decrease. The beauty of the gifts of nature it does not decrease, right? And yes, when we are there surrounded by nature, we are in the lap of nature, we're sitting under the shade of a tree. It is where you can just comfortably relax and you can be assured of good health. Okay, that is the power of nature. It gives you happiness, it relaxes you, it also gives you good health, right? And every day as we wake up, our connection with the earth, it becomes stronger because every day there is something that we come across that binds us to this earth, okay? And we are here surrounded by the gifts of nature, and one by one, we are making a flowery band which makes our bond, which makes our connection with this earth even stronger. Okay? And yes, when you talk about the things around us, in this world, we are not only surrounded by the beauty of nature, we are surrounded by humans. Right? We interact with them, we deal with them, and we come across many unpleasant moments in our life. When humans, they reveal the bad side of their characters or the bad side of their nature. We get disappointed, we get hurt, we feel upset, right? And there are times when the sadness lasts for a number of days. But what happens that we come across a moment in our life that nature comes and it removes, it seems as we become so happy, we become so much better cheerful, right? When we come across these gifts of nature, the sadness, the paleness, the weakness, which is there in our lives, in our, you know, like what uh, interactions that we have, it removes all that sadness and we become better, healthier, happier. Forget about all the worries and all the problems that we have. Okay? Right? And now, yes, here, he is also talking about what are the gifts of nature. Can you tell me the gifts of nature which are in the poem? So we have here, right? So the heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, how important they are and how they give us so much happiness, right? So yes, so we have the sun, the moon, the trees, old trees, young trees, and it never stops giving us what? Shade, right? And uh, as we know that even till the very end, the tree is so useful. The tree is such a blessing to us. We don't realize this, but they are there and it is that we are here on this earth to make our life happier, beautiful, comfortable, healthier, but we are not here, you know, aware of how to take care of these of nature. Yes, we're blessed with them, they're eternal, they will be here forever, we'll continue. 
to be a part of this earth, but we may, must make sure that we take good care of the gifts of nature. So what are they here? We have what trees, how they sprouting a shady moon. Okay, right? So yeah, just the blessings which they give. So it's an old tree, a young tree. Talk about sheep, talk about flowers, the daffodils here. The green world that they live in, all the green vegetation which is there. The clear rills. What are rills? Brooks, streams of water that for themselves a cooling cover to make. Are these lines clear to you? Are they clear to you? Because you never said you have any doubt. Have you? So are these lines clear to you? So the clear rills, what are the rills? They're the streams of water. And as they flow, what do they spread? What happens to the area around it? It becomes cool, right? So it cools the area around it and it makes for a cooling cover, a cool area, right? Against the hot season. And where do we find happiness? Where do we find that relief? In the hot season, when we are under the shade of a tree, when we are surrounded by greenery and vegetation, or when we are here sitting on near the banks of the river, of these little streams that are flowing, and the cool, you know, atmosphere that they have created, the cool surroundings that they have created. Okay, the mid forest break that in the middle of the forest you come across a beautiful patch with these wild flowers blooming. And you're so surprised to see that this beauty can exist anywhere in unexpected places, right? Fair musk rose blooms. So the wild rose blooming. In the middle of the forest, you come across this beautiful place. And such too is the grandeur of the blooms. Even in death, there is it's talking about the stories of the heroes, of the warriors, of the leaders, of the great personalities, about the sacrifices. And when we read about them, it gives us happiness, right? And all the lovely tales that we have heard of them. An endless fountain of immortal drink. So these tales of warriors, of heroes, right? The beautiful areas that we come across, the beautiful gifts of nature that we come across, the heavenly bodies that we look at, all of these together, they are the eternal gifts of nature. And it seems, what are they compared to? An endless fountain of immortal drink. So just like a fountain, it keeps on flowing, the water endlessly. So these gifts are just like as if a fountain is there in heaven and of course these gifts are falling down upon us and will continue as long as the fountain is. And the fountain will always be there because the fountain is immortal. And heaven is the blessing us with these gifts. God has blessed us with this gift. Nature has created these gifts. So as long as nature is there, as long as the earth is there, we will continue to be blessed by these gifts from heaven. Okay? Right? So nature has created these beautiful gifts which are endless. Is this clear to you all? Now, let me look at the book here. Yes. I'm assuming that, that everything is clear to me because you have not asked me any question. You don't have any doubt at all. So good, isn't it? And I'm very surprised. Okay, now look at it over here. Yes, look at these lines. Can you identify an example of alliteration? Look at these lines after Shady Moon. Can you identify a line which has an example of alliteration? Yes, come on, give me the answers quickly. What is alliteration? Alliteration is the repetition of a consonant sound. So words which have the same consonant, the same sound as we speak, that repetition happens. Okay, that is alliteration. Now look at these lines. 
Can you identify an example of literation? Come on, hurry up, hurry up, quickly answers. You are aware of literation. It is your favorite example and maybe your favorite device. Yes, give me an example now. Come on, fast. Are you awake? Are you attentive? Are you listening? Yes. Okay, what is Yeah, noble natures. What's that? Noble natures? Is it alliteration? Yes, can I say it is alliteration? Yes, uh, Gitesh, Abhishek, Ulkit, Payal, Mankirat. Can you say it is alliteration? Yeah. Okay. How is it an alliteration? Noble nature. Right? Now, if uh, what do we call a poetic device where there is a repetition of a vowel sound? Your vowels. A E I O U, as you say, your A E, A A E O A. Right? Those sounds, repetition. What do we call it? We call it as anaphora. We call it as anaphora. Now, can you find out an example? Yes, very nice, right? Good response, Kundi. So can you identify in the same line, right, of noble natures, of the gloomy days, right? So what is it? There is a repetition of a vowel of sound, of the gloomy days. O, A, okay, O, A. Right? So the vowel sound is there, repeated of the gloomy days. It can be an aphora also. Okay. Right. Now here in these lines, what do you think is a flowery band? What is a flowery band? Yes, it's a comparison. It's a comparison. Yes. It's a comparison. What kind of a comparison? Is it like a flowery band? As a flowery band? Or is, is it a flowery band to bind us to the earth? What is this flowery band? What is it? It's the bond, it's the connection that we have with the earth, right? So what kind of a comparison can this be? Can it be a metaphor? Yes? Okay, yeah, of course it is. Then let us come here. Okay. Clear rills that for themselves a cooling covert make. What is this? What is this? Cooling covert make. What is it? It's alliteration. Yes, it is alliteration, cooling a word. Okay. Then we have, what is it here? An endless fountain of immortal drink, pouring unto us from the heavens drink. Endless fountain of immortal drink. What is it? Which fountain are we talking about? What's the fountain here? Can it be a metaphor? Yes, endless fountain of immortal drink. We're talking about the gifts of nature, isn't it? Right? Yes, it can be. And of course, it is also an example of imagery. What is the imagery here? It's a fountain, right? What is a fountain? The fountain is there falling down on earth and as it falls, it's not the drops of water, but you have these abundant heavenly gifts, which are the gifts of nature. Okay, right. Is there a rhyme scheme in this? Is there a rhyme scheme? Daffodils, rills, make, break, blooms, dooms, dead, drink, drink, isn't it? A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, isn't it? It's like that, isn't it? 
Yes. Can you, are you able to identify the knife scheme? You know how to write the knife scheme? Yes or no? Give me yes or no. Come on. You're not so tired. You're not so exhausted. You're not so sleepy that you can't even say yes or no. Yeah. Okay. So you know how to I, I identify the. Yes, that's nice. And as expected, it's the same students who they're giving me the answers. Okay. Now listen, the things of beauty mentioned in the poem. What are the things of beauty mentioned in the poem? So what are they? Yes, so many things are there, right? So we're talking about the shade of the tree. We're talking about the heavenly bodies. We're talking about the sun, the moon. We're talking about, yes, the animals. Which animal here has been referred? The sheep. Yeah? The daffodils, the clear water, the streams. All these are the gifts of nature, the things of beauty. Now listen, things that cause suffering and pain. If the gifts of beauty, the things of beauty are there giving us happiness, what gives us pain? What gives us pain? What hurts us? What is it that hurts us? It is human behavior, right? Human behavior and the sadness that happens in our life because of that, the constant sadness that is there in our lives, all this causes us pain and hurt, isn't it? Yes. Now, what is the line? Therefore, are we reading a, break, a, a flowery band to bind us to the earth? Suggest. What does it suggest? What are we doing? Every day, it seems like everyone has a band, you know, created, okay, right? So, one moment, one memory, we're adding and adding and we're making this band. Right? And we are connecting ourselves. So this flowery band it is our connection. And what's going to flowery band? Another gift of nature. Isn't it? Yes. So this flowery band that we are breathing, we have encircled ourselves. We have surrounded ourselves with this beauty of nature, with this beautiful movement. And as a result, what is happening? Our connection, our bond with the earth becomes deeper, it becomes stronger. Okay? Right. Now, what makes human beings love life in spite of troubles and sufferings? Life is, uh, we always complain, oh, life is so tough. Uh, there are, it's uh, so difficult, you know, when we have to study so much, and so many exams, so much of slavers, right? So, what is there that, in spite of all those troubles and its sufferings, what makes us love life? Of course, it's a beautiful world. We're blessed to be in such a beautiful world. We're blessed to have so much of beauty around us. Isn't it? Yeah. So we are there. There is the gifts of nature. It is this beautiful planet that we are a part of. So little moments you come across, little things that you see, little moments of happiness that makes this. It's not necessary you have to have a long moment or you have to have days and days where you see. It is just a short interaction, it is just a short glimpse, a short stay over there, right? That makes our life so beautiful. Now, why is grandeur or greatness associated with the mighty? Right? Some people say grandeur, some people say grandeur, right? So, how is it associated with the mighty? Right? What is the greatness associated with the mighty? Right? What's the greatness here? What is it? Yes, that is even after their death, our warriors, our heroes, our leaders, the personalities we look up to, that even they are not here. In spite of that, they are what? Inspiring us. So there is at times beauty in death. After death, these people are continuing to inspire us. The greatness with the death of powerful people. Okay, right? Yes, so in this way, we can also say that, yeah, it is that we do come across good people also in our lives. So they're sad, we're upset. A word of kindness, a word of encouragement, it can work wonders. And maybe in spite of all the problems that we have, in spite of all the sufferings that we are going, maybe there is that little word of encouragement that you hear that makes you move on. Right? 
So there's beauty there also, right? So there is beauty in death. Who's death? The people who inspire us. We've read about them, we've not seen them, but yes, we have read about the tales of bravery, of valor, of sacrifice, of courage, and how they inspire us. Okay, right? Now, do we experience things of beauty only for short moments, or they do they make a lasting impression on us? The first line, a thing of beauty is a joy forever, right? Its loveliness never decreases, right? So, yes, so it is, it's not just for short moments. We interact with them. We see them. We are a part of them for a short moment. But what happens? That memory lasts forever, right? What image does the poet use to describe the beautiful bounty of earth? What is bounty? The gifts of earth. What is the beautiful gift that we're getting from earth? What is the gift that we get? Yes? What's the beautiful gift? The gifts from heaven, the gifts of nature. And which image is there? What's the image? The image of a fountain. So fountain falling and just like that, the gifts of nature are coming from heaven. Okay, right? We got these answers. Have you got these answers or not? Just tell me please. Yes? So a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness, but will keep a bar quiet for us. So no, we can never forget these things, even if we were there for a short while, but the beauty of that moment, the beauty of that place, it will be there with us forever. And of course, that tree, that plant, that area you saw, all the beautiful gifts of nature, it will be there forever and ever. Once again, of course, man does not interfere and it creates a lot of disturbance, right? So gifts of nature, what is their quality? They are eternal. They give us happiness. They motivate us. They inspire us. They take away our sorrow. They take away our pain. And yes, just like a fountain falling on the earth, these gifts of nature, they keep on coming to us blessing us, touching us in many ways. Is this point clear to you all? Is it? Tell me please. Yes, students, any doubt?